All right, what is going on everyone? It's Super here and welcome to another Mortal Kombat X tutorial and today we're gonna be playing and I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to play with Butcher Leatherface. Of course, as always, if you guys do enjoy these tutorials, make sure you guys leave a like rating on the video. Let's try to hit over 500 likes again, that would be awesome. And down below in the description is a link to the playlist of all the tutorials that I've done so far. So here we go. He has a lot of tools um, that transition really well into each variation. So of course you guys know the best one he has is forward one two. Forward one, well, let's just talk about forward one. Forward one is a seven frame forward advancing uh, mid, I was gonna say, forward advancing high. But this is one of the best punishing tools in the game because it is character length, it has a great hitbox, and it's seven frames. It's really fast. One of the fastest punishing combo starters in the entire game. And of course, it leads into forward two, which you could hit confirm into anything you want. You can hit confirm into that. You know, with this variation, you could hit confirm into his meter burn launcher. In Killer, you could hit confirm into the stance, um, into the stance launcher, into the stance overhead. You could even trick your opponent and go for a cheeky unblockable, and he might not be expecting it. And Pretty Lady, he could hit confirm into his up chainsaw. So it's just a great uh, combo starter, no matter what variation he plays. Uh, moving on is the standing one. The standing one is actually pretty good for anti airing. I don't know if Sub-Zero is going to be a good demonstration of this because his jump one is ridiculous. But as you guys see, um, his stand one is actually a really good anti air. It's a good anti cross up. And once you get this, you could actually go into this. You know, you could hit confirm the stand one. You could throw in, uh, if you don't want to throw in the forward one, you could just go into that. I never throw in the forward one. I don't know why. It's just, I just like going into this. It gives you a little bit more damage if you go into this, into the forward one. It gives you like 2% more damage. Uh, I don't know. I just like going into this, but that's a that's a great anti-air that he has. Um, I don't know if it's a good anti-air, like just like that, like straight up. Um, it, it gets beat a lot. I'm not going to lie, but anti-cross-up, it's really good. You know, and, and you get a full combo. For anti air purposes, punch people in the balls, please. He has a really fast uppercut. It's really good. This is actually also a good punish because, like I mentioned, if you um, don't have meter or if you don't trust that you're going to punish properly with this, uh, use, the, use this one. This is like a guaranteed damage machine if you know that your punish is going to connect because 33%. Meterless is no joke. The way to make things safe with Butcher Leatherface is to always end your combos or always end your block strings into his overhead pounce. But the thing with the overhead pounce, your opponent could actually meter burn through it and you're in trouble because as damage, you're on you're on defense now. You don't have too many defensive tools as Leatherface in general. So that's one of the big downsides to Leatherface. You get pressured a lot. Um, but you know to keep it safe you just go like this um, if your opponent doesn't uh, Doesn't know about Armoring through this or backdashing through this or doing something about this specific overhead move Guess what if your opponent blocks this you are plus two That means that you could try to go into your offense again If you do this you're plus two it actually doesn't guarantee you anything but you know, you're at this advantage or you're at this spot and you're plus two. It's pretty much set to neutral. Um, you do have the overhead, which if you micro micro run, meaning you just run forward a little bit. So like that, um, you could actually catch your opponent if he's trying to, you know, do one of his combo strings. There you go. That That's, that's a lot better with the micro run. So... Anything that you do with Leatherface, if you want to stay 100% safe, you know, you go into his regular overhead. But like I mentioned, your opponent has a lot of time to actually meter burn through this specific move, but that's a way to stay safe and even plus. So, 
One unique thing that Butcher has that the other ones don't is actually a overhead combo starter, which he doesn't have the overhead, you know, just straight hit, but he has something even better. He has a combo starter that's an overhead that is completely safe if you stop at the third hit or you end the full string. You're just completely safe. So it's forward two. It's forward two, forward two, one down two. Yeah. So this string right here is so good with Leatherface because you are completely safe after this. Your opponent might think that you're gonna end your block string into this. So guess what? You do that, you go into another one if your opponent's respecting you. If he tries to poke, you try to poke him back. And then you throw one of these in there. You know, if he's trying to poke you after this because he thinks that you're gonna try to go into your combo string again, guess what? You throw this in there, he can't poke you out of that. He's gonna get hit by it. And guess what? You hit him with the overhead, you're this close again. He has to guess low or overhead. And the best thing about this string is you could actually very easily hit confirm into his meter burn launcher, or you can hit confirm into that. So you could easily see that. It's three hits that, are, that go very slow. You could either, if you see your opponent get hit by it, you could go into this. And that is 37. 37% damage, one bar off a of hit confirm, off an overhead, in which you could also, you know, go with the low. The low option is one bar. 32%. So that's definitely a really good option that Leatherface has in Butcher. Um, not only that, but like I mentioned, you could do meter listing. And this actually comes in handy whenever you hit someone that is standing. So meter listly, you get 36. Very, very good. Of course, if you try to do the same thing and don't use any meter with the low, you're gonna get punished if, if the opponent blocks it. But of course it works. If you actually connect with it, it's gonna work. You even have a time you even have time to jump in since you're at range. And that's gonna be what, 32? 33% meterlessly. Um, so like I mentioned, Butcher Leatherface could get a lot of damage either with meter or without meter. But once you start doing this and your opponent starts respecting it, you could throw in command grabs in there. So if you are doing the overhead and you stop here, your opponent respects it because he thinks you're gonna poke, hit him with the command grab. It's 10% and everything is reset to neutral pretty much, but you still get 10% damage off the of command grab. Um, other tools, other like uses for the command grab, same thing with Aaron Black, same thing with um, Jason. If you hit your opponent with like a down three, your opponent is gonna know that it's your turn to play offense. So you hit him with a down three, instead of going into your offense, go into the command grab. You hit him with a down one, instead of going into your offense, hit him with a command grab. You know, if you jump in, he thinks that you're gonna go into a combo string, guess what? Okay, let's make him block because if he is in hit stun, he's not gonna get hit. So you do this, guess what, command grab. I'm not going for my overhead this time, I'm going for a command grab. So command grabs are really strong, especially with the options of an overhead and a low combo starter with Leatherface. Beautiful. All right, so now that we got the basics covered with Leatherface, we got his strategies down, let's talk a little bit about his vortex. So if you guys don't know what a vortex is, pretty much it's putting your opponent in a situation, oh, excuse me, animal. I am playing Leatherface after all where you put your opponent in a situation where he has to guess between an overhead or a low, or in Leatherface case, even a command grab. And then if you hit him with that specific option, you put him in the same situation again. So you're pretty much looping that situation if you hit your opponent. So Leatherface used to have a really, really strong vortex because what would happen is the second hit of this was actually plus 20, somewhere around there, meaning you could get an overhead and a low for free without your opponent being able to do anything but guess. But Netherrealm thought I was too strong, 
So they nerfed the second part of this to only be like maybe plus 10. So your opponent could get out of it just by poking you. It's not even plus 10. It's it's not plus at all. As you guys see, like sub is going to recover really fast. See, he recovered really fast. Your opponent could poke you out of any situation. So that was his old Vortex. Um, the new Vortex that he has is similar to the Vortex that every other character has, like Ermac and Smoke. You use the plus frames of your jump too. Your jump and punch, use the plus frames of your jump punch to start the Vortex. So every jump two in the game is like plus 24. Um, this one right here, it's so his jump two is actually plus 23 on hit, meaning that you're gonna get a free overhead or a free low, but you have to wait just a half a second. Not even a half a second, um, like one, uh, pretty much a quarter of a second. Uh, if you wait too long, your opponent might be able to get out of it, but I'll demonstrate the vortex for you guys now. Let's just say that you get your opponent on a meterless launcher after a punish. So Sub-Zero does a slide, I block it, I go with this, bam, jump in, back two. Okay, so that is pretty much the base of your vortex. That's not the vortex, but that's like the whole gist of it. That's the, um, the easy part, you should say. So after you hit him with your back two, what you want to do is jump over and make sure you time this right because his jump two is actually very stumpy, as you guys see. So after you hit him with this, you jump over and you hit him. You have to be fast about it, too. Huh. So you hit him with the jump two. There you go. See, you have to be precise with it. It has to combo, okay? It has to combo because there's many times where even I mess up and it doesn't combo. And I'm like, why did my vortex work? It's because it didn't combo. It has to combo for it to work. See, his jump to is very stumpy. It's all about timing. But as long as it combos, it's going to work. It comboed there. So... Let me demonstrate the Vortex all over again in its completion, all right? I'm even gonna go into an overhead and you guys will see how the Vortex works, so. That was a bad example, but I'm glad that I actually got it wrong because that's a perfect example of what's gonna happen if you hit your opponent too fast after you jump two. If you hit your opponent too fast after your jump two, you're gonna keep on comboing and the vortex is not going to work. You're actually going to have to, you're gonna have to go into your damage. So let me do that again. So that's pretty much the gist of the Vortex. As you guys saw, I got um, the jump and punch to work. I waited just a little bit, like a split second. You go into either this or your overhead. Of course, I decided to go with this option because, I don't know, I just, I just did it. And that's pretty much how the Vortex looks. Like I mentioned, even I fuck it up quite a bit because his jump two is very stumpy. And it has to combo after the back two to actually work. You know, you do that, you wait a little bit, and then you go into your offense. So that is the Vortex. As far as like his best combos, mid screen, you're not gonna get too much more damage than what I've already shown you. So that's like, um, you know, a pretty solid punish for Leatherface or a solid jump in. Um, if you do get someone with some, something like this, you know, you, you want to confirm into that. Pretty much everything applies the same. You end, you always want to back to your opponent because it's going to give you that tiny bit of extra damage and it's going to leave them in a stun state for you to go in for your overhead.
So that's like something that you could get with uh, the other variations as well. You know, you could always in the corner with Leatherface do a stand four into the up chainsaw to extend your combo a little bit more. Uh, you could do it with the regular one as well. And that does around 40. Yeah, 41. So there you guys have it. Those are like the most damaging combos that you're going to get with Leatherface, mid-screen, and in the corner. At least the ones that I use and that are practical to use in an online ranked environment. So that's going to be it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the Leatherface tutorial. And I will see you guys next time. What's going on guys, it's Super here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you guys subscribe or check out any of these videos linked at the top. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time.